words from my memory And I'll tell you of times long ago When we walked to school summer and winter Barefoot through the fields we would go I remember our little tat cottage And the half door led into the hall The crane over the fire in the kitchen the grandfather clock on the wall. The stout it was cured with the poker and put in the secure the food. The bacon it hung from the ceiling. Sure, the story I tell you is true. We went to church every Sunday and grandfather wore his best hat. The preacher he spoke from the altar And all the women in different seats sat That's making us part of tradition we will And the rambling house filled up at night And we told the ghost stories All the children that shiver with fright This doubt it was cured with the poker and for Jean, the set cured the flu. The bacon it hung from the ceiling. Sure, the story I tell you is true. So, what's your name? I'm at Goodhead Connor College. And what did you make here? I made a Celtic cross. Where did you learn to make that? In primary school, we learned in class. Just. Where did you go to primary school? St. Angus in Virginia. And what's it made of, and, and does it take you long to make it? Or? You have to lay out all the rushes and grips on the floor, and then you just put them in the pattern and then tie the edges. Was that an easy one to make then? Uh, if you have a room on the floor just to make it, it's quite easy. And do you make a whole mess as well? Yeah. yeah. And who, where do you get the rushes? Um, my daddy usually left them out in the field just. So he does all the work. And what's your name? Karen Boyce. And Karen, what did, what did you make? The same Frederick class. When was that made for? Um, the 31st of January. And did you make that yourself? Yeah. Hold it up there to see it. That's lovely, isn't it? How long does it take you to make that? Just about five minutes. Five minutes? Yeah. And who taught you to make it? My mum and daddy. At home, in the house? Yeah. And you make them in the house every year? Yeah. That's great. And what happens to them then? We put them out at night, frozen in frigid to lesson. So outside? Yeah. And what's the story? Does St. Bridget come along? Or? Yeah, she comes along and blesses them, and then you can fit them in your house and they're holy. That's great. And do, do you just make one every year, or do you make a number, or do you...? We just make, uh, like, different amounts every year. Right. And do you give them to friends and people? I give some to my granny. That's good. That's lovely. And who's this girl? Laura O'Donnell. And do you make crosses, Laura? Show me, show me the fruits of your work. St. Bridget's cross. That's a St. Bridget's, is it? Yep. And where did you learn to make that? Primary school. Right. The teacher's teacher mm -hmm. taught you how to make that. Yeah. That's good. And are you proud of it? <laughs> <laughs> it looks a bit shaky, does it? <laughs> Do you think if St. Bridget comes around, would she bless that particular one there? I think she would. It's lovely, yeah. It's good. Thanks very much indeed, Kerr. Well done. Okay. Thank you. And uh, and your name is Mary McGovern. And where are you from, Mary? Ballygan. And are you familiar with all this cross making? Yes. You know? Do you yes. make them yourself? Yes, I do. Do you? And what, do, what is the story with St. Bridget and the crosses? She always brought on the rushes on 31st of January after the sunset. St. Bridget had blessed them and made the crosses. So after you made them, did you live them outside as well for blessing or? No, they can be taken in after sunset to bless then, they're supposed to be. Right. As far as I remember. I see. So did you make them outside then? Or? No. 
The right. rushes would be blessed. Oh, the rushes, I see. And you could bring them on then. Right, right. Make the promises. Church and Bridget worked differently around your house than she did up in <laughs> other places. <laughs> and what is, this, what is this that you're about to make now? Those are uh, those. the harvest plant, which they used to make when they cut them. Yeah, and and do you know the history to them or why they were made or? People used to make them just and wear them in their lapel. Lapel, that's right. You'd see them run around with them. Right. Oh. And you actually can make them. Make them, yeah. Those are ones that were made. Right. So you just, just get a just a rush, two rushes, and you just bend right across and back and back again. Not even make this now right. <laughs> just continue to fold it down. Continue to fold on the cut, and it just comes out different. The pattern, like, right? As you can see, it's a bigger one you made there. There, yeah. yeah. That's great. That's lovely. That's fine. Take them out. Take them out. What are you making, Liam? Harvest plant. When when we were young. I was waiting to see who would have the first harvest plant and the first corn ripe when you went to the dance. And I'll show you how we wore the stuff. And it was made from straw. So yeah. Whoever had the first corn ripe had the first harvest plant. It was wore then. And then the buttonhole in your coat. That was the pride of the night, whoever had the first harvest plant. I'm John Grant and I'm representing Skelnev Yosef, St. Joseph's National School here in Ellis. And a, a lot of the young people here are pupils at the school. Actually, Mary and me were in the same class as school. And we used to enjoy making these uh, crosses and bridges crosses in class. It was a welcome distraction from, from schoolwork. So it's, it's lovely to see this uh, custom being preserved. Uh, it's very much part of our culture, uh, our rich heritage. Uh, and the practice shows uh, the great faith that people had, you know, the care that was taken in making them. And you see the different designs there. And the people then, the uh, <coughs> They would display the cross and Bridges Cross very proudly in their homes. And you would see them out in the outhouses, in the hen house. And uh, people uh, believed it brought them luck and it, it uh, showed their, their great faith. So it's nice to see this practice being uh, preserved. And it's lovely to see the young people involved taking part, learning. Uh, to make them and it's, it's an education for them. I suppose all the way at the potato gathering and the, the digging of the bridge. That's, that's another big, that was another big event in, in school life. We used to get days off uh, to gather the potatoes in the autumn and we had a chance of uh, making a few bob too. One of the nice things about this event today as I said, was the young people taking part and uh, observing the old uh, custom of making crosses. And I noticed there the fun that the young people had uh, today here, eh, just the running around and uh, playing with the rushes and hitting each other and the fun. No mobile phones, no playstations, no DNSs, no modern toys, yet they have great fun. In fact, there was a lot of competition for these rushes, you know. Farmers would have went great distances and would have bought a field of rushes. Actually bought them. Really? And the first use was they would have, uh, well, the back, I suppose, they'd been moved with scythes before, because as I said, they always grew in wet ground. So, the first use they would have had for them was for making what they called bands for tying lint. The lint would have been pulled by hand, but they needed something to tie it that wouldn't damage it or wouldn't um, dye it, for instance, or whatever. Right. And when the lint was pulled, it had to be 
bound into, into beats. Some of you see the way the rushes are there, but they weren't really pulled by hand and bound into beats, tied with rushes. So the farmers would have, the first use would have been to make the, they called it the beating band for to bound the rushes. And the way you do it is you just made it like that. You put the right over left, your left over right, and you get a band. And that was used for tying the lunt. Those then would have been spread on, on the hedges to, to, to winnow to enable them to dry out and they would change then a sort of a brown colour and they were as tough as rope, like they were really strong then, you know, when, when they dried out. And there would have been, uh, some families would have actually bought fields of rushes and mowed them with sides and made the bands and then sold the bands to the farmers. Our family would have bought bands, like, you know, maybe made a way to come a Crennan or somewhere, you know, and they would have bought them, they would have been bundled and they would have bought them because they couldn't make enough for themselves. That would be one use for the rush. Let us pause in life's pleasure and count its many tears, for we all sub sorrow with the poor. There's a song that will linger forever. In our ears, all oh, hard times come again no more. There's a song, the song of the weary. Hard times, hard times come again no more. Many days you have lingered around the cabin door. All oh, hard times come again. from Falash. What was your name? Henry McLaughlin, known as Big Henry. And uh, he would have been living in Bellum again before the company would be here. But he knew where the station was going to be. And he wouldn't have this place beside the station, Bellum again station, was still there. As good as them. That's the train station. Train station. So you made a fortune then? It's a big yet. It's a big yet. But that wasn't the only person. You only had a lamp over there. That's it. Enough to do you. Enough to do you. Big Tom says you can't take it with you. Can't take it with you now. You go out to see where you come in. Where you come in. We went to church every Sunday. And grandfather wore his best hat The preacher he spoke from the altar And all the women in different seats sat That's making a part of tradition And the rambling house filled up at night And told the most stories All the children that shiver with fright Doubt it was cured with the poker and what Jean said cured the flu. The bacon it hung 
from the sea. Sure, the story I tell you is true. 